And then we'll just wait for the new business part of it. There he is. Welcome back. Thank you. It's been a while. <laughs> so can I just ask a question? Yep. One of the things that is this family night? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, he's here. Hey, Kathy. Oh, it's connected. Jerry, call your wife. Yeah. We're not going to talk about it. It's the so, Wi Fi in East Berlin. As soon as she finds out, it's probably going to fall. Yeah. Sorry. What was somebody's talk? I was. It's the, the, the one caveat he had on it saying pending the 10 122 rebound. So, I mean, we don't really know what his, the settlement price is yet, do we? Per se. Know that. Yeah, that is, but it's just pending that rebound. My, it's a, that to me meant if the rebound comes in, comes in valuing it higher, this guy's going to go back. Yeah, you know? there's a tentative agreement to take this. Okay. Yes, it's signed it. It is conceivable. What you're doing tonight is appropriating the money. If ultimately that number changes, there wouldn't even be an appropriation to pay more. They got to circle back. Move okay. everybody. But, I mean, George brings up a good point, though. I, I think he's using this as a ploy to get himself more time to come back to the negotiating table and ask for more money. Because he can obviously do that. He could. He could. He could. He could. He could. He by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. All right, so why don't we get into new business? Um, do you want to make a motion? Sure. Uh, the appropriation of $1 million from the fiscal year 23 general fund and fund balance for the purchase of the real property owned by Rio Vista Associates LLC on Atkins Street, known as the Sussex Map 22 4, block 55, lots 1 through 8, and Assessor's Map 23 1, block 15, lots 9 through 13, subject to the completion of a 8 24 report from the Berlin Planning Facility Commission. Second. Discussion? Um, make a motion uh, an ordinance appropriating four million nine hundred thousand dollars for school HVAC upgrades 2023 and authorizing the issue of four million nine hundred thousand dollars bonds <clears throat> of the town meet said appropriation pending the issuance thereof the making of temporary borrowings for such purpose. Second. Discussion? Well, I'm just like, if we ever get bids back, I'm, I'm assuming this is for the Willard HVAC. It's actually for all three. Okay. We need this. Um, this is in addition to the $5 million that was appropriated. So it would encompass all three. The bids came back um, at approximately $8.9 million total for all three schools. No, I shouldn't say bids. I should say cost estimates. No bids. This is necessary because the town is pursuing um, state issue has um, appropriated $150 million for grants for HVAC improvements at schools. But as part of the application process, the town must certify that it is prepared to fund the project. So we have the 5 million of our funds put aside this 4.9 million to ensure that with the application, the board of ed can then say the town has an ordinance in place. This in no way locks the town into borrowing anything. This is just really, it's an ordinance that allows for the borrowing, but in order to borrow, we would require town manager, mayor, and finance director all to sign the legal documents. Anyone who checks bond comes to stop it. Um, but this gives us the ability to go forward and submit that application. The applications are due by December 1st. So right now in parallel, we've been getting quotes, all the plans in place, um, the Board of Ed is putting all of that work together to do the application for December 1st. Approving this ordinance tonight, it would then be posted by the town clerk, which is required of any ordinance, so the public can come in and reject if they want. Once that period runs out, we would have the ability to go to the state and say, here's how we prove we've authorized funding. And we could potentially get some or all of that funding. We could. Or yeah. we could back out at any time. We could back out. I mean, this is not actually borrowing. This is just authorizing a borrow to take place. 
if if the state grant is provided, so we get any grant money for any one of the two schools or all three, right now as written, the construction needs to be completed by 2024. So the plan was to be to kind of work through the schools. We have to compress it. The funding would compress as well. We'd have to do construction faster than probably originally intended. That's a terrible because HVAC is upgrading faster at all these schools. And we could realistically potentially get two or two million plus potentially. And 150 million, 150 million sounds like a lot, but across all the schools all around the state, 150 million dollars is going to go quickly. We may not get anything, in which case this could be used or not used. This is just necessary for some of what that money to be, but to be in the money. Just so you know, because I talked to Doug this morning. That eight point nine million cost estimate was not covered. Well, we have to take questions by leading to that. There's, so there's going to be other costs. Wasn't well, sure what we we're doing, but at some point we got to be cognizant of that five million dollar bonding level, which stuff needs to go to referendum. So, like throwing them all in one bucket, treating it as a project, we may hit ourselves. Yeah. We may be up against that. Yeah, wall at some point. Mm -hmm. That's why I want. No, it's, it's actually I understand what you're doing. Right? Okay. Um, we should know by early next year. That's how they described it. Early 2023 will be when they announce the winners. Um, it's entirely possible. I would say this: the town went in for a competitive school security grant back in 2017 and put all the schools in. Three of the five won. To this day, we've never had an explanation for why three were selected and the other two weren't. There was no particular basis. Burl and High School, Hubbard, and uh, it's it's right <laughs> probably were arranged by the door for it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was no, there was nothing yeah. about one school or another that cameras were more important or it's an age group or anything. So we may not get anything. We may get something for all three. But what we want to do is make sure we start having any try for it. The transfer of seventy-seven thousand two hundred twenty dollars is detailed in the government spreadsheet without a higher than budget of the temperature in the identified events. Right. Rushing. Do the ordinance and then. Great halfway tonight by the council. Um, the amount came in a little bit higher than what was originally projected. And the second is police. We have a police disability plan that's actually written in the police contract, and we have a hundred ninety-six percent increase year over year. Um, so we are transferring some money. Fortunately, uh, health insurance came in a little bit lower. So we had transferred to the health insurance fund what was actually the, the rate increase. So some money was left over. And uh, we pulled some money from in lieu of sick pay for retirees. And the idea that we are speculating that maybe one person will retire who qualifies for retiree now. Is there any Reason for that huge increase in one shot? Like just kind of said, well, I mean, 97% is a little lot. Uh, well, yeah, that seems uh, you know, we look at for another company. Or... Uh, well, this plan was actually written for us by Lloyd's of London. It did not exist. Um, it's, it's an enhanced disability plan, much better than what the townhouse, the town non police town employees. Um, if nothing existed, this was actually crafted. After it was written, several communities contacted us and Lloyds about potentially having a plan. And all we had speculated at this point is after five years, she doesn't want to carry it. So there it looks like rather than firing us. But it took us a while to get Lloyds on the table. We did, uh, there was no change in the rates. So we settled on a month to month review so that if, if at some point we're able, to move this in a different direction, we would drop the plan. This funds it for the balance of the year so we can maintain better coverage. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
for next year. So putting this out here just so you have it, and the vote would come at the next meeting, but it's an opportunity to see the dates. They're largely consistent with this year's dates, so if anything is put on it with. As usual, August 1 is over here in the event your end transfers are needed. Otherwise, we can cancel that meeting. It's it's a really more just because I make the most of cancel that meeting. <laughs> I won't know if the transfer was needed until then. So there's no vote tonight, but it's an opportunity for you guys to have a month to, to look at it. We do have to turn it into the town clerk. So we'll vote next meeting with any modifications if you want them. The second one is the budget meeting, same format as we've used in the past. The one change I do want to call out, and this is a proposed change, we'd like to do it, but high school auditorium is very difficult. Um, in addition to the fact that anybody who was at the senior center this past year realized that three people showed up for the meeting, so it's probably not the best use of everybody's time to split the meeting. What we'd like to do, though, the time and the location is a challenge for seniors. We'd like to hold it up and either at 6 or 6.30. If, if that works, we're close. To, and then there's people working and other commitments. So nothing you have to decide tonight, but that's the one thing I just wanted to throw out that we thought that might be better for the overall community. It's maybe more participation in the meetings. And I also, that night, rather than putting it the next night and then having a special meeting, identified that as you've done the last couple of years, you can take the vote to send it to the council that night after the meeting. So we can consider it to be just soon. Yeah. So we'll have the um, community center meeting anymore, which we want the meeting. That's, that's the idea. That's, that's what we'd like to do. And have it a little earlier so maybe we can seniors who will come out. The last time there was a board of finance budget meeting at McGee, um, was the most pleasant topic. That was the year of the show everybody with. So they all came. But the opportunity, the opportunity for folks in wheelchairs or walkers or other things, it's more level, it's far easier to get in and out of. That, that old doctor, remember he lectured us, he said we should all go for pie and coffee and solve our differences over time. The one who's not doing you think you should get a raise? Oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I like pie. Yeah. So there's no votes, but it's just putting it up there for you guys. Okay, let's go through the science. Okay. Um, I just want to call out um, a couple things on the update and then answer the questions for the next time. One is, um, while it's showing up here, we did make the final payment for the lighting upgrades for the McGee Library and Media Center. So beginning next month, I'm going to take the 2% unexpended fund area off of this because we've now expended all that money. I think if you look at the list, there's a lot of great projects completed. Um, second thing I will tell you is, if you remember the when we were going through the budget process, we received a letter from Martin Heft, who's the undersecretary from OPM, advising that the revenue sharing grant is number four out of four in terms of uh, statutes and how the funding takes place, and advised municipalities not to include it in the budget. We received a note from him that um, probably about three weeks ago that the Apparently, were some communities who did who cash flow, what have you. Long See on your opportunities under the seats. That's what the municipal revenue sharing grant is. It's actually that grant paid out by the city. They also fully funded the tiered pilot and such a service. <laughs> Thank you for giving us our money back. Yeah, <laughs> that's an opportunity, especially as we think about some of the projects, whether it's a TAC, police station uh -huh. renovation, or others, to potentially appropriate that. I know we talked during the past few months about hey, if we have insights early, maybe we can appropriate it earlier. We could potentially put that in and mitigate, or along with some other things, as you can see, interest income continues to be very strong. SIF is paying almost 4% interest. 
I'm doing everything I can to hold on to as much money as I can in there. Um, we're seeing substantial growth right there. Cash is going to start flowing out with debt payments and things now. Uh, but to give you some perspective on the magnitude here, But that, that four hundred thousand dollars to use to offset some of this expense for the uh, pension plan. Would be it could. If that's how I chose to use it. If that's choice, um, I would. Given where it sits in the statute, and given that the money came in, and, and given the potential that everybody's talking about with the recession, I would recommend you guys can do what you want, but I would recommend probably taking more one-time items. That's why I was thinking of the police station renovation, HVAC, uh, because I wouldn't bank that this will come in every year. So if you were to use it to institute new well, hours, it would be a one-time thing anyways for the buy-in, would it? <laughs> if you were to use it for buy-in, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Just want to set the buy-in. So, um, you know, um, interesting on my website continues to be strong. Vacant positions, um, we, we've had a few of those. The biggest area we're seeing the vacancy, unfortunately, once again, is the police department, continuing to see turnover. Um, the number, if I were to pull it right now, would be higher than the 750 on the other end if I included them. However, the chief is actively trying to fill all five of those open positions. He has their folks in background and other things. So I'm not putting the full amount in that would be out there because I believe we're going to hire some and encumber some of that money. So we'll know better in the next few months. It's obviously not a good one wants to see vacancies at the police department, certainly not the numbers that we have. Um, so yesterday, I thought it was great, but we finally got. So we had an assistant planner, planner and the enforcement officer, both were vacant for a same period of time. Both are now filled, which you can do with the planning department and for those who are trying to develop. Um, so next page, I mean, you can see I've added a year to date column to get a little bit of perspective. We're on pace with last year. I don't mean to indicate that that's a good thing with the VA, but last year we had 600. I, I wish I could tell you that there's a reason to be optimistic the number will be better, but at this point, I, I can't give you one. Oh, is your real director agree with the 300,000 risk? Or? At this point, yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to disagree. I know it's only four months, but if you start to see movement up, you might say, okay, maybe it will progress, but if you look at those four months, it's not, it's not getting unless you guys are seeing something I'm not, it's like giving the indication that we're moving forward. Where, where, where is the target number? Let's put the $900 number there. Um, with a group in West Hartford to be able to provide services to that uh, institution. That unfortunately hasn't really materialized in substantial revenue. <laughs> there were a number of marketing issues. <laughs> you know, they signed an agreement with West. Well, it was a group, it was a, a home in West Hartford, a uh, assisted living. No, that's just living. What I'm saying that's a facility outside of the town of world. So we're moving town vehicles on services. Well, I mean, they haven't really had business there, so. Thank God. <laughs> so that's kind of the update. There were three questions from last time. I did mention one of them at the beginning, but uh, I'll start with the first question that you asked is, which was the composition. What exactly is it Main Street? So um, towards the end, you'll see after the VNA, the next pages are the email responses I have. So this was from actually. And that is the Cromwell Public Schools participating in the transition program that we have. Transition program is required by statute. We share it so that there's an opportunity to offset some of the costs. The composition in 22 and 23 by town is listed here. 
That's the one where we're, we're receiving $81,000 from Cromwell for this. So we're And what is it costing the town of Berlin for each one of the Berlin students there? I would imagine around twenty thousand dollars a student. Well, remember these are these are the transition programs. These are okay. Kids. This is separate. Yeah, this is for kids. The state requires it. These are kids who mm -hmm. need. Machines to go. Yeah, and buy the grocery store, washer and dryer, those kind of just um, at some point, you know, leave their parents or whoever their caregivers at this point coming may not be here. And this is trying to get folks not just in front of the well, state. I, I guess my main question is do we have a number of how much it costs per student to operate that facility? I don't, I can ask. Well, I, that would seem to, you know, I mean, we're required to do this program. And the idea of being, well, I understand how the program works and that we would have to outsource it. But now what I'm saying is we're also we're Cromwell, if this wasn't here, Cromwell would have to outsource these 10 students too. At yeah. a considerably higher cost than eighty one hundred dollars. But right now they're paying fifty percent to know and they only have 10 kids in the program. You know, 15. Yeah, this I'm just I'm just wondering if there's like a first student cost. That's all. Get some cost just to have two students there. Yeah. And quite high in the incremental cost. You need to understand that too. I mean, this pretty much tells you, you know, except for the sliding to the expensive one, you know, put 50 50. Yeah. And then building improvements, or whatever specific for the program operation, based on what the program is shared. So, what is the building? The Y owns the building. The y is still on. This is this is part of a lease trade. So the Y has their daycare in okay. Hubbard and McGee in exchange. Their rent, they're essentially rent free. Well, we can get this. The minority collection in total program cost would be really a huge deal. Uh, it's yeah. I'm I'm saying I know I understand we're saving money. I just want to make sure that we're putting it properly because. In some of these cases, like we have that the Clinton 61 that seems to get forgotten in some of these things, and we're maintaining this building, we're including the rent costs and everything else. The cost of the couple is how picking up that and maintenance costs and everything else, and that's not included in this number. Earlier, with a an opinion from the town attorney that not to suggest that it's verbal or that she would be doing it, but that it is not illegal for the VNA to provide services out of town, that it's legally permitted, that in no way suggests it should be done. It's just, well, it is separate. I don't think it was a question of whether it's legal from a state statute perspective. It, is it what the charter intended? Is it in concert and keeping with what the charter tells them their charge is? What's the overarching document that governs what they are to do and are to do? It doesn't go into legalities as far as I'm concerned. Well, the the charter references the, the Bible references the governing document for the board. And the governing document for the board is the bylaws, and there's nothing in the bylaws that prevents offering services out of town. But that in no way, again, it's not, I'm not in any way suggesting that it should or shouldn't be done. It's, if you, there's plenty of things that are committed that may not be the best. Bylaws as adopted by the DNA. By the cell board, yes. They set their own rule. They vote on their own rules. The council had no say. The council had no say in their bylaws. Oh, three of them. The only way, yeah. Okay. Well, that's here, that's I guess, irrespective, I mean, it's still an issue of trying to understand their accounting and, and whether they're recouping their costs anyways. And again, this comes also down to not their incremental costs, but their fully burdened and also the administrative services costs, whatever. You know, we talked about this last time. 
How much does it cost? <laughs> um, there's not really a cost accounting system in place for all of what they do to be able to then pull back together. But I can tell you from a DNA perspective, we do a PL every single month. Okay. As of this past month, they had about 225000 in revenue. They were about $248,000 year to make in labor costs. So, right off the bat, we start, you can immediately say, well, they're not even covering your labor. Wow. Which is why we, we've said for a little while. The cost of the labor that's charged to it. So, are they even making an attempt to look into why they're not covering the labor costs? They are looking, and the new director has established standards around the services that we'll be providing. And she's specifically focused on out of town, but they have to be returning that the revenue obtained from that service has to be at least, has to be greater than the cost to send the nurse out to settlers. So what does it cost? Um, well, I've given her what the labor hour cost would be for nurses, for health aides. What is the cost per hour? And we have to know based on insurance providers, knowing what, what they offer for reimbursement for the service that's being provided, is it something that we can at least break even at a bare minimal? But if we're going out of town, we need to make something off of it. Um, that makes it challenging to, to gain. Yeah, look, if, if we know our revenue to date is not even covering the labor to date. <laughs> you then... mentioned that um, <laughs> you mentioned at the last meeting you know, Westbrook that had, had pretty much downsized or just operating within the whole town. And I did a little bit of looking into that and I noticed that they seem to be using a lot of per diem. Yes. Their staff is much smaller than they are. A lot of per diem. Yeah. So the director has been actively working staff and have more per diem. So the director's been actively working to bump up the per diem, the number of per diems. But you have to go if you go up per diem, you have to go down somewhere else on the lecture. Just I'm just ask a question. And I'm at That contract, really was, although it's a year and a half into it, because it took a year and a half to settle. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, the Zoom keeps freezing in and out. I'm not sure if it's been discussed already. How many patients do we have right now in the DNA? Yeah, What's the, how many? Don't know. Don't know. Okay, so that negates my second question, which, well, how many of them are out of town? Well, the third question that came up, one of the questions from last time was how many unique people participated, how many unique patients were there? And so that's the last email in here. Um, there were 247 unduplicated patients during fiscal year 22, is what I asked. I'm just picking the last full fiscal year. 176 are from Berlin, East Berlin, Kensington. Um, outside of town would be 71. So at any given time, this could fluctuate. You can sit here one all one month. Yeah. Right. So this is trying to give the picture of, okay, across the whole fiscal year, what did we have? And you can see the communities where they came from. So there's 71. They tried a new approach source from West Hartford. That, that is a program that I mentioned they have the contract with. So we lose that period. Sorry. So would it be fair to say that we're not even cap like capable of paying the labor on seeing those 71 patients? They're not covering the cost of labor. I mean, the labor is a fixed cost, so oh no. They're not even tracking. Yeah. Oh, 
Can we can we have can we invite the director of the VNA, the new director that spoke very passionately at the last board of directors meeting and town council chambers to come and talk to us? So I need to have her on the agenda for January. I could do it in December, um, but we plan to have her in for January. Uh, and if there's anybody else for budget purposes you want to hear, but I, I think I think we're, we're going to be discussing budget in January. I think we should be talking to them in December. To be honest with you, that's my take. Yeah, I, I kind of would agree with that. Well, well, we'll we have a lot to deal with. There with is there a way that we can? direct the town manager when he's compiling the budget. You know, he compiles the budgets. He's tell, he tells all the departments, uh, you know, what kind of increase or, or decrease he's looking for. Can we have him go and say, okay, we want you to present us two budgets. Here's, you give us your, your regular full functioning budget and give us one that's going to cut your deficit. Or, or by two thirds, or by some number. You say just to the VA? Yeah. I want the directors to yeah. be a plan as well. So that when the budget comes to us from the town manager, he's considered that. Now, obviously, if he <laughs> doesn't think that's in the best interest of the town, he can do it. But I, I would think then I would be wanting to say, okay, well, I want to see what your budget would be if your deficit were half of what it is. What would it take to get to that? Yeah. But I mean, so, so that we have to determine, like I said, it, it to fit in with so our Will's question, that it? has to be something before the budget is is really. So $375,000 loss instead of $750,000. Well, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. I, I, The meeting with the mayor and Roche in, in the DNA, and I really don't think they're grasping what the problems are. Hmm. So I, I would recommend you go watch it. It's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. When was it? What meeting was uh, it? Was uh, you were there, weren't you? Uh, what, what was the date of that meeting? It's actually on YouTube. If you type in uh, DNA. Uh, you know, Burlington, Connecticut, VNA uh, special meeting. It was beginning of November or, or end of October. It was the meeting. Oh, okay. He's trying to, he's trying to give them an understanding of why we can go to And they still, you know, we're getting it. I, I think a lot of them think as long as they don't exceed their expenditure budget, they're doing fine. Right. That's exactly what it is. If they think they're fully budgeted, they, 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 they never they care about the revenue. Oh. Should operate just like every other department. Right. You know, they don't exactly. understand the revenue model side of it. They don't. One thing that would be helpful for me is to, just to get an overview of what they do from the perspective of the you know this multi. Had nothing to do with it, but it's an all one budget. So, yeah. all staff. Well, it, what do they do other than the then you know service these customers? I mean, what, do they have any other fixed costs, or is this all? Yeah, I mean, right. I know they do stuff at the senior centers and stuff like that, or is that all? That's all covered. It's all covered within this. this. Okay. They do home home health care, so home, okay. and then they have home health aides, so they're individuals. Some of whom are. Really Do we have any idea what their utilization is in terms of, you know, there's so many hours in a week, how many billable hours they have for, for you know, maybe they're not getting reimbursed enough, but what I'd like to know is like, do they have people sitting on the bench at all? You have to be very careful with that because we, we asked that question several years ago and we got all these utilization numbers from the director at that point that they were 90 something percent utilized and this and this. And then when we had the um, consultant come in, his numbers are, are 
you know, it, it, it's just totally different, you know, and, and the utilization thing also has to be looked at in, in terms of the over providing of services. You know, I mean, if you're keeping bu people busy by sending them out to do Yeah. All right, so why don't we kind of let's invite her for this in the meeting. Anything else? I have a motion for the Motion for the girl. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.